What's up NZers? Hi! And welcome back to another family reaction video. This time we're going to be checking out uh, a little bit more American history. So we're going to go way back. Way back. We're going to go check out the... First of all we wanted to check out the... Apparently the speech. The famous speech that Abraham Lincoln gave uh, as the Gettysburg Address. That was re requested by you guys. Yes, heavily requested. So we uh, thought... Because the kids probably won't know much context about it when they hear the speech, we're just going to watch a quick four minute video. It's called The Battle of Gettysburg, The Civil War in Four Minutes. So this is just going to, I guess this is going to like set the scene. Yeah. It's going to take us into, you know, that area and like that time and like the, you know, how heavy it felt for everyone and stuff like that, yeah. like the true weight of it. So let's check it out. A little bit of history. In June of 1863, Confederate General Robert E. Lee took his Army of Northern Virginia into the North for the second time. The Union commander, George Gordon Meade, was in pursuit. Um, they would ultimately bump into each other here at Gettysburg. Behind me is the town of Gettysburg around which the Battle of Gettysburg will be fought. The Battle of Gettysburg started by accident. Literally, troops bumped into each other. General Lee heard that Meade was pursuing him and Lee concentrated his army. The Union vanguard is already here as well. And they're going to bang into each other north and west of town on McPherson's Ridge. It's an intense fight. Ultimately, the fight will grow until north of town. You're going to have the Union 11th Corps fighting against the Corps under a guy named Richard Ewell. In the end, you're going to have 30,000 Confederates outflank and whip 18,000 Union troops who retreat back through town to Cemetery Hill and to Culp's Hill, where we stand now. And for the next 24 hours, all that happens is that both sides bring the remainder of their troops here until the Yankees have maybe 90,000 troops and the Southerners have maybe 70,000 troops. And the Yankees form in the shape of a fish hook. And we are right here on this fish hook at the end of Culp's Hill here. The Union line will continue along Cemetery Hill behind me cemetery ridge and eventually end over on little round top the southerners line up around that line basically formed on the most distant tree line you can see way off in the distance okay if general lee needs to go from one side of his army to the other it's six miles Meade only has to go two and a half Meade is also on the defensive Meade has more men on a more compact line and lee is more strung out and Meade finally has the home field advantage on the second day of the battle, Robert E. Lee decided to take 15, 20,000 troops under James Longstreet and attack the Union left, and take maybe five to 10,000 and attack um, Culp's Hill. But the attack on the Union left flank took place first. The Southerners are going to have to get over there without, be without being seen opposite the Union lines. Ultimately, the Southern line will attack what's called an echelon, where a couple of brigades will do, and then a couple more, and a couple more. And ultimately, Longstreet's men will make fierce attacks. First, they'll fight at Devil's Den and Little Round Top, and then onto the Weed Field. And then they actually have found a gap in the middle of the Union line, troops that had gone to reinforce some of the fighting in other areas, but the Confederates can't quite push through it, because wherever they show up, Union reinforcements from inside Meade's strong official position arrive and push the Southerners back. Ultimately, the bloodiest fighting at Gettysburg, the second day on the South End, will come to a close without a decisive result. And while Longstreet is attacking the Union left flank, the Confederates are beginning a huge artillery bombardment on the Union right flank. Here on Culp's Hill, that bombardment would do anything. The Confederate attack doesn't come for long until long after, actually, the fighting on the Union left flank is mostly over. Ultimately, the Southerners will try to attack East Cemetery Hill. They capture part of East Cemetery Hill. They capture nine cannons. This is the key Union position at East Cemetery Hill, and it's about to fall to the Confederates. But again, Union reinforcements push the Confederates back. Confederates have a little bit more success here on Culp's Hill. Culp's Hill consists of two hills, an upper hill and a lower hill. This is night fighting, very obvious civil war. The Confederates easily capture the lower hill, but they're unable to capture the, the uh, pinnacle of Culp's Hill. The next day, the fighting resumes, where the Confederates try to capture Upper Culp's Hill. The Yankees re return with even more reinforcements, not only recapturing their old trenches in Lower Culp's Hill that they had lost, but maintaining their possession of Upper Culp's Hill. So On the third day, so. having already tested the Union left flank and the Union right flank, the Confederates opted to attack the Union center. And this is what we now know as Pickett's Charge. Um, Pickett's Charge is going to take place in the field behind me and uh, on the afternoon of July 3rd, you're eventually going to have a great moan go up from the Union line. This is after a huge artillery bombardment 
But the moan comes not from that, but rather from the beauty and pageantry of the great Confederate assault, 12,000 troops advancing across that field, you can see um, over my shoulder. The game is decimated with long-range artillery, and as they reach the road, Union reinforcements pour into the area. Um, the Union flank bulged out, so the Confederates are going to get flanked, but nonetheless, they push on impetuously, gain some of the keys still along the area. The Yankees are able to, however, push them back. 6,000 of the 12,000 soldiers who made the attack were killed, wounded, or captured. We lost 23 battle flags in that attack, more than he'd lost about up to that point in the war combined. Robert E. Lee horribly failed in Pickett's charge, but the next day he still stayed here through the rain across the fields, faced George Gordon Meade and said, come on Meade, attack me. Um, Meade did not take the bait that night. Robert E. Lee pulled back through the mountains, nine days later escaped back into Virginia, and the Civil War goes on for almost two more years. Wow. That was intense. That's intense. That was intense because you saw a lot of like lining up and shooting and then you also saw a lot of guys just like turn their rifles around and just use them as weapons and there was like hand to hand combat. Mm. So it was just like a mixture. It looked really brutal. Mm. Anyway, so apparently the, that led on to, I'm not sure how um, soon after Abraham Lincoln gave his speech, the Gettysburg Address, but apparently it has great like historic significance. Yeah. Okay, so let's check out the greatest speech in American history, Abe Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. It's only two minutes long, two minutes 45. So it's not very, it must be short and sweet. Straight to the point. Mm. 1863. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war we have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate. We cannot consecrate. We cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it, far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note, nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. Mm. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Wow. <sighs> that was really short, but straight to the point. Mm. I loved it how he was very humble. He didn't like say we have a great enemy or anything like that. Mm. He's just like, we're engaged in a battle here. And all we can really do here is just uh, remember the dead who gave their lives and, but also just look, push forward to freedom. Yeah. And uh, yeah, mm. that definitely happened. I like, it, was, it was powerful. Yeah. I think in the wake of a war or a big battle, you kind of have to be able to sort of sh give the people in the country a vision yeah. To see Ford, to look past the war, yeah. to look past the battle. And to rally. Yeah. And to come together. Mm. And now, I mean, yeah, you just look America, America now is like, yeah. you know, just everybody just loves freedom and stuff like that. And yeah. it's just, 
Yeah, wow, that was amazing. Yeah, it was I, a speech of unity. Yeah, I, I had heard that, you know, I've, I've heard, oh, Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, but I'd never actually heard the speech. I'd heard the government by the people. For the people. For the people, yeah, I'd heard oh, that yeah. part before. Yeah. 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 I'd never heard that whole speech. Wow, that was, mm. that was touching. Yeah, I'm glad we checked that one out. Thank you for requesting that, guys. Yeah. And also, if you like that one, make sure you smash the like button and share the video as always. And also, check us out on Instagram if you haven't already. Yeah. And if, also, if you don't want to miss any of our other uploads, make sure you hit the post notification bell. And also, just go check out the channel. Go see if there's any other videos you might want to see. And uh, we've done reactions to like the Star Spangled Banner mm. and a few other cool uh, American history videos. And if you have another request, yep. put it in the comments. Yeah, let us know down in the comments. Yeah. And also, we love you guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.